In this problem, we will look at the electric field due to a hollow sphere uh, made, up, made up of insulators with a thin surface wall. So what you can think of is uh, the plastic balls that you have seen, seen which are hollow from inside, uh, made up of plastic which is an insulating material and uh, the wall of these plastic balls is pretty thin. So though we show a thick wall here, you should assume that this thickness is really very small. And a charge of Q is distributed uniformly over this surface and this charge density is sigma coulomb per meter square. And we want to find out electric fields at point A and point B. So let us first start with point A. Um, you'll notice that this is a spherically symmetric um, charge distribution. And so, given looking at the symmetry of the charge distribution, let us assume that my Gaussian surface is a sphere passing through point A. So I have another sphere. And the way you should look at it is, uh, it's this, uh, the Gaussian surface, it is, it is a sphere outside my plastic balls. So you have two plastic balls, one inside another. Let me say the radius of this sphere is R. Then, for R is greater than A case, where the point A lies outside my plastic, outside my hollow sphere, I can write Gauss law as integral E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon zero. Let's see if this choice of Gaussian surface makes sense. Because this is a spherically symmetric charge distribution, E at every point here is radial. So this is going to be my electric field at each point on my Gaussian surface. You can also argue that since it is a uniform charge distribution, E at every point distance R is going to be uniform. Then dA of a sphere at each point is again going to be radial. So what I get is E and dA are parallel to each other. And so my Gauss law can be simplified to E is uniform, constant. So I bring it out of my, or before that let me write my E dot dA, theta is zero. So E dot dA becomes E dA. And since E is constant, I bring it out of my integral. This essentially is the surface area of my Gaussian sphere. And that is E times 4 pi r square. And that is equal to Q enclosed. Enclosed, the outer Gaussian sphere encloses my entire hollow sphere. That is, encloses the entire charge Q over epsilon 0. And from that, I can get E is equal to E at point A is equal to 1 over 4 pi r square q over epsilon 0 and that can be written since 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is k, I can write this as kq over r square. And this is my electric field at point A due to a hollow sphere with total charge q distributed uniformly over it. As you can notice that this electric field is exactly same if I had a point charge q placed at the center of the sphere. So both an insulating hollow sphere with charge Q distributed behaves similarly as if I had a point charge Q placed at the center of the sphere. Let us consider what happens for point B. And this is the case when R is less than A. Again, looking at the symmetry of the charge distribution, I will assume a spherical Gaussian surface. So my Gaussian surface is a sphere inside my hollow sphere. Integral E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon zero. But what is Q enclosed? Since this is a hollow sphere, there is no charge Q inside my Gaussian sphere. And so my Q enclosed is zero and that implies that electric field at every point inside my hollow sphere is zero no matter where that point is placed inside the sphere. And this is a great example of how we can find out electric field by qualitatively reasoning it out. We did not do much math here, but from Gauss law, you can just look at the geometry, look at what the charge Q is enclosed and reason out what the electric field will be.